All right, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to, finally. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a, a long time in the making. And we're in go. quarantine. We're coming to you live. <laughs> yeah, we're actually two filmmakers. I guess we should talk a little bit about what we do. We're two filmmakers, but we're also investing heavily in the, in the market and everything. And, and we have a lot of time to bullshit about <laughs> this is basically all we do every day most of every day and we figured why not record it see if it's somewhat interesting if this could be somewhat interesting to other people and if it is we'll go ahead and upload it i think we'll still keep doing it even if it's not interesting to other people so because <laughs> so it's fun and if we can make money you know if we're making money we're good but if it does help people because we've gotten a lot of help from people on youtube um that i put up um, put up videos, have channels where they discuss not just stock investing tips, but also just specific advice on specific companies. Like, uh, and we're we're invested in those companies as well. So, yeah, well, I'm actually coming from New Jersey, and Carlos is in uh, Los Angeles. So, this is a, a, a national podcast. Right. <laughs> it's already an, well, actually, <laughs> it's not international yet, but it's national. I'm gonna get Phil in. He wants to talk about calls and puts. Okay, because so uh, th this is going to be an investing. Let, let's get straight to the point. This is going to be uh, mostly an investing channel and how we're all going about our different ways. And I think today we do have uh, already a guest, <laughs> already a guest on the podcast. Right. <laughs> Three seconds and we have a guest. And it's going to be Phil. And uh, he, he's doing uh, put and call options, which I don't really have much experience with. And uh, I do want to know about. Um, he can you know, use... He'll, he'll use the, the example of what he's doing with, uh, with Carnival right now. Right. And Carnival has been screwed. Well, why don't we, uh, I'm going to share my screen and maybe go to a Carnival chart if we're going to be discussing Carnival. Right. Let's do that. All right. So, uh, well, here I have VYM. We're going to talk dividends too. We're going to talk a lot of stuff. Well, here's, here's CCL is Carnival. So let's look at, let's look at them. Ah, oh, today they're up. What's but as you can see, as you can see, it was like at 50 bucks. What's um, interesting about this this option is what we were discussing this morning is does it make sense to exercise the the um the, to to convert the call option to actual share so you can participate in the dividends or does it make more sense to wait and actually you know uh, purchase the stock later so it's twelve point eight six percent right now because the stock has been crushed. That's assuming Carnival survives and gets bailed out that they're even going to pay this. I would think this is, uh, this is very 90%, risky. 90%. <laughs> this is very, very risky. <laughs> <laughs> no, but imagine they get bailed out. You're basically getting 13% on your money right now. So if Carnival can keep paying somewhere even, even half of that, <clears throat> that's like 6, 6%, 7%, which is a pretty good... But I think they're just going to cancel their dividend. That's probably what's going to happen, at least in the short term, <clears throat> and bring it back later. You know? Yeah. So well, this will be a, this will be a long term play. This will be a long term play if you believe uh, the cruise line industry is not going away, which it's probably not. So I uh, I think we're going to at least me and you I think are, are focusing on what can we get that we believe has a very high chance of like ten xing, right? Well, ten x is the dream, but I mean, at this point, three x. It's got to be. It's got to be ten x. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, that, that, that's buying Amazon at a dollar. You know what I mean? Or buying <laughs> Tesla at, uh, you know, we missed the three fifty drop. Well, I want to show a Tesla chart too. Um, but to be clear, we we didn't we didn't weren't buying into Tesla at three fifty. We had stocks. Well, no, I was buying into Tesla at between two hundred and two seventy. My average buy in before the market collapse was 240 i think that was my average buy in somewhere around that was there. your average yeah yeah me too cuz i had gotten them at 50 like 20 just going to 2014 and then bought some more of it then it went up to 307 went back down oops well i mean tesla's still up for me that's that's the crazy thing uh even with this even oh, with the cv out, out there something uh, and uh <clears throat> i have sold uh i, I think i at this point, maybe a little bit over half, and I did buy a bunch. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna discuss exact numbers yet, but <laughs> I did buy a bunch, and I sold on the way down from 900. Uh, I didn't actually clear 900. I, I think I started selling at seven, uh, 760 down. That's when you and, were selling. Uh, yeah, here and there, I wouldn't sell a lot. It'd be like 10, 15 shares each time, and uh, but I'm done selling, so I want to keep what I have, and I'm hoping Tesla drops which it probably will. I'm, I'm still assuming 350, 400 is very likely. Um, 300 would be like a gift. But 
there's no way in hell I thought that Tesla, when it was like 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks, I wish you told me more about it, <laughs> but I, there was no way in hell I thought it would have survived, you know? It just seemed, and, it, and it did. Like, it seemed a lot like their, their company trajectory, the, and, and specifically Elon Musk felt a lot like Steve Jobs back in the 90s. Well, he did. I met him too. I don't know. I don't want to get into the story right now, but I'm saying they were so small that you wouldn't think anyone could just make a car because like only big guys like Ford and GM make cars, right? right? Well, there was a so, big, um, they, they had some hurdles. I mean, a lot of it was just even, even being able to sell their cars, you know, the way that they sell it. There's a lot of, there's a lot of red tape and a lot of bureaucracy in the middle of that, that prevents smaller companies from selling cars mass market. Um, yep, they, yep. they got around it. I mean, those were all points well, that they could not have made it. They're still dealing with the red tape because uh, they don't have a dealership, quote unquote. So I think they're being blocked from a lot of states. I don't know how many states exactly, but they're still being blocked on selling their cars. But of course, can, you could buy it online, but they can't open up their actual showrooms. So yeah. a lot of that is being blocked by, I don't know how many states. You never buy a car directly from Ford. It, 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 they're the first never. to do it. Whoever it sold a car directly. Up. Yeah. And then that, that car manufacturer then has a little bit of a markup. At, at worst, it's three percent. At most, it's you know whatever they whatever they decide to charge. There's a company called Ark Invest. I don't know if we spoke about this, but Ark Invest is like um, uh, um, they're they're uh, stockbrokers or whatever they are, but they basically have ETFs. And part of their big bull thesis is that uh, uh, Tesla's lowering the price of batteries so fast that it's going down on this curve that in a couple of years that it, it'll be parity or less, meaning right. cheaper to buy instead of a gas vehicle, you know? But and they've also, another smart thing that they did was they- Oh, we got someone oh, connected, shit. I see. Oh, shit. Holy That's shit. The, the doctor's in the house. <laughs> we were actually chatting about Tesla, but we can skip ahead to like uh, this calls and puts and how to how to short the market, how to how to bet, or how do you do calls and puts? Because we, I've never personally done it. I know you've spoken to Carlos about it. Yeah, uh, and this is this is going to be an. Me and Carlos are trying to do an investing channel, obviously. You know, we just just, oh, okay. just bullshit and talking about just bullshit about and talking about and, stocks. Uh, am I, yeah. I going to be featured on the channel? You're, You're our, our first, first guest. guest. <laughs> <laughs> I bought a call option. I I bought the stock itself, but I also bought a call option to give me the right to purchase the shares any time over the next uh, two years. For, for how $2, much? $2.25. So I bought uh, Carnival Cruise Lines. It was around $9 and I bought a $2.50 call option. And the $2.50 call option gets added to the price of what you pay the premium. So I have the right to buy that stock for $2.50 per share over the next two years, uh, and it was around $9. So as long as Carnival is above $11.50 per share, okay, uh, I see. I'll, I'll, I'll be in the positive and I'll make money. So, so you're paying $2.50 no matter what for the right to buy it? Yes, if Carnival goes up to $2,000 a share somehow, I have the right to buy it from whoever sold me that option for $2.50 a share. But not, you, you bought a contract and the contract is for 100 shares. Yes, so every that's contract is 100 shares at 250. He could buy 100 shares of that. So the, it was at nine bucks. So if, as long as the shares are over $11.50, the price of the stock at the time plus the, the price of the option, he's making money. So wait, yeah. so you're saying $2.50. Don't you have to pay minimum $11.50 if you bought it at nine? Why are you uh, saying $2.50? Buy it at nine. I, I, it, the stock price itself was around nine. So all in, it's going to end up averaging out to about $11.50 per share. Uh, right. So any, any number above that 1150 and then I'll be profitable. Um, but theoretically, my potential profit is limitless because Carnival can go, you know, it, it'll never happen. But theoretically, it could go to a million dollars a share. So, uh, so. Okay, well, I guess I have a couple of questions from that. But all right, so let's say right now it's at, we can say it's exactly almost 18 bucks, right? Somewhere around yeah. there. Yeah. So at 18 bucks, you've already made from 11, 18 minus 11.50, which is uh, 650, correct? Yes. Yeah. Per so share. 600 bucks because of the each well, 650 per share. And you bought, a, you bought how many shares? I bought uh, two contracts. 
each one's a hundred share. I don't even know what uh, each contract is a hundred shares or something. Yeah, it gives me the right to buy two hundred shares of Carnival at two uh, two dollars and fifty cents each. So five hundred dollars, I can buy uh, uh, two hundred shares right now, and those shares are worth whatever the price is now times two hundred. So okay, so you, you did. So the other the other thing is how long you have a two year a call option, meaning any time in those two years, you can buy it any time. Yes. And so what happens, okay, there's two scenarios. Obviously one, let's say it stays at the 20 bucks and six months from now you want to just, I guess, sell your call options, right? Is that what it is? You sell them? You, you have two choices. You can either sell the option or you can execute it. So if I execute it, what'll happen is whoever sold me that option will physically sell me those uh, 200 shares and then the shares themselves get added to my account versus I can just sell the option itself where whatever the profit is right now, I just you know take that contract and sell the contract to somebody else. So, and, and, and they take a fee obviously for that, that sale. Well, no. The, the, the fee is technically paid up front because I paid money to purchase the right to be able to buy those shares. Does I that see. make sense? It does. Do you pay, is this like a one-time payment or is this a monthly payment of $2? Will, for a one-time payment. And it's also capping my losses, meaning that if I, if I pay X amount of dollars, whatever, whatever I pay to buy that contract and it doesn't hit that strike price or go above that strike price, that's the most that I can potentially lose. Okay, so you invested, how much you said, 500 bucks? Um, I, I bought two contracts. So it was, uh, it was like uh, $1,700, 1800 Okay, so seventeen, eighteen hundred bucks. Basically, if it drops below eleven fifty, you're saying obviously you're not gonna uh, you're not gonna execute that contract, no. and then no. you've lost seventeen hundred dollars. That's what it sounds like. Yes. Even if but it's at eleven twenty five. That you you it's it, as long as it still has time. There there are a bunch of factors in there. There's also the time limit. So if it goes to eleven twenty five right now, it doesn't really matter because I have two years that I can wait. Okay, so, so you, you just hold it. There's no reason not to hold it because no one's charging you any more money. No. The most that I can lose is my initial investment. Like I gave Carlos an example the other day. We were looking at a call option on Tesla. First of all, you probably want to explain the basis of what a call and put option are. Oh, yeah, a that's call, good. Let's start call, there. <laughs> a call option gives you the right to buy a stock, a specified amount of stock, which is 100 shares per contract at a up to a specified date. So what you have up on the screen expires tomorrow. These aren't the, okay, I see calls and puts. Okay, good. What I uh, want is I want the one that lets us look for it in the future. Because this is one that I would actually buy. I would buy one for $300 to have right, 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 right. shared yeah. right around the time that the earnings call would come. Well, it's okay. The bid and ask is close anyway. I don't think we're concerned with the dollar difference here, or $2. So go back to the one that's showing us everything. Uh, so, okay. So let's say we're looking at this. So go up. I think if we're, I think if you're doing a call, you're betting on the future being higher. You're not betting on it. So I'm not sure where this oh, lower this is the price you want to buy it. This is, this price is the price that you want to buy the, you want to buy the stock at $300. That gives you the right to buy 100 shares at $300 per share. Oh, on that, that day. Does a put give you that, that right too, or no? A put, a put gives you the right to sell those shares, even if you don't own them for a specific price. So if you buy the right to, if you buy the right to sell Tesla shares for $500 and it drops to $200, somebody still is obligated to buy your shares, 100 of them okay. at $500, even though it's currently at 200. So it's the last week of the month. Here we go. So, okay. So these calls and puts, just to clarify, it's, is this an, a weekly thing it expires or is this a, a random, what day, is it always weekly? They, they, have, they have options that it usually expire every Friday. Um, okay. But when you start getting further out, it'll just jump like months to, you know, to years even. You could buy like two years out like I did with uh, Carnival. Okay, so here we go. Um, we want it at 300, you're saying. So, so this is the, this, this, the right side are the put options and the left side are the call options. This is what we yes. want to be looking at. So yeah, this is what we saw on the other page. So bid and ask 222. 232, explain the bid and the ask 
how it relates to the options to, to the, the bid. The bid is what somebody is offering. You know, let, let's say somebody has something to sell. The ask, you know, the merchant is saying, hey, I want two thirty two eighty five for my item. The bidder is saying, hey, I'll give you two twenty two eighty five. So it's, it's basically just a, a spread between what somebody's willing to pay and what somebody's willing to sell it for. Yeah, yeah. So the, 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 right, right, right. So basically when I'm, when I'm buying it, I'm paying 232. Uh, well, if you were to buy it at the ask, you're never going to yes. buy at the ask. You negotiate a little bit. So right now, if you were on this options chain and you put an order to buy that at, let's say, 223. Okay. The bid price, the bid price will change to two. What happened? No, I'm just looking at. Uh, what it says here. The, the bid price will now change to 223 because you're the highest bidder. And okay. chances are, if the seller is watching it, they'll lower it down and say, "Hey, how about uh, you know 230?" Right. And I got it. I got it. Dance. You keep inching up. They keep inching down until you until you strike a deal. It's a negotiation. That's all. It okay. Is. So so let's say two thirty right now. Let's say we're buying that. Yeah. Uh, two two thirty a share. So two. What what does this last? Is that the last? What does this last mean right here? This. That was the, that was the last price that somebody paid. Somebody paid two forty seven yesterday. Okay. Okay. The volume is how many contracts. It could have been one person that bought 10 contracts. That's how many uh -huh. contracts were sold. Okay. Oh, I see. And, and so we don't know how many contracts are selling. We just, we just put our order in and someone will hopefully meet us there to sell us that. The, right? the, op the open interest, I believe, is how many are being offered right now. At 2.30 approximately, yeah. we're saying we're going to buy it when? Well, like how long is this? Like uh, until how long is this option for? for? Expires April, April 24th. So today, what this is saying is right now, if you wanted to buy this option, you're gonna let's say you agree to a price of 230. You're gonna buy a hundred shares. You're gonna pay this. 230 bucks a share. You're gonna pay twenty-three thousand dollars for the right to sell to buy Tesla at three hundred anytime between now and then. So if the stock yeah. starts to shoot up, let's say the stock right now. Right now, the stock is 517, right? So it's 517. That means if you get to buy 100 shares, if you get to buy 100 it, shares. What doesn't make sense here is like, if I can, basically right now it's 517 and tomorrow I can execute this option and just. Yes. You're paying that, we agreed on a price of $230, right? Yeah. Right. yeah. So that's $23,000 plus $30,000 because you still have to buy the shares at $300 a piece. Oh, I see. I so the, the price is actually $530. Right. If it's 20 it's 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 Okay, the, 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 that's the piece I was missing. I, I wasn't yeah. looking if you pointed out the strike price plus my uh, my cost obviously for this option. I get it. Okay. Now you have control of 100 shares of Tesla. The most you can lose is 23,000. But Theoretically, if you were to buy 100 shares of Tesla, it would cost you 50000 So for a little bit less than half the price, you now have a control of 100 shares of Tesla. So your maximum loss can, it is capped at 23000 period. If you were to buy the shares of Tesla and the stock went down to zero, technically you'd lose 50000 Well, Yeah, but a, that would never happen. So no. th th this is not a good deal right now. <laughs> so... It's only uh, the deal. because in in our hypothetical scenario, our, our uh, we we assumed that Tesla was going to go up to seven hundred and fifty dollars a share. So right. let's, let's do that. Let, let's let's do the math on that. It's now the twenty. Right. It's now the twenty second. Tesla comes out with their earnings report, and the stock yeah. shoots up to seven hundred dollars on April twenty third. Yeah. And you purchase this. You spend two hundred and thirty um, twenty three thousand dollars. To control yep. 100 shares and buy them at 300. Now yep. the stock goes up to 700. If it went up to 700 dollars, then you would make 170 dollars per share times a uh, times 100. Because you this 23,000 is the option. Then you add the 30,000 dollars of purchasing yep. the 100 shares. That's 53,000. But the, yep. the but it's now worth 700 a share, and it's 70,000. Well, no, the fifty-three thousand that you put in. 
and you walk away with $17,000 profit. Yes. Or the shares, if you want to keep them. Or the shares. Absolutely. Or the shares. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can, you can execute the, the option. And, and, and so on TD Ameritrade, though, like you can select whether I want to just sell my, my, my call option or I want yeah, to execute it. There's a thing that says buy to open or sell to close. If you buy to open, that's you opening a new position. Um, if you sell to close, that's you just literally selling the options contract. You can also execute. If you execute, then whoever uh, sold you that option will be forced to get a, a hundred shares of Tesla. If they do, if they have it already, they're gonna they'll they'll just be transferred to your account. If they don't, they'll be forced to buy them from you. That's why a lot of times, like Tesla, will shoot up like crazy because people short uh, shares of Tesla that they don't even own. And then Tesla released that 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 killer earnings call last time, yeah. and the price shot up. So all these hedge funds and investors were scrambling and buying Tesla at any price they can get it to cover their short positions because they didn't actually own the shares. They sold those contracts without owning any shares of Tesla to cover it. They did all the puts, and that's why they had to cover those puts. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, they did they put were, options. They, they, were, they sold put options on shares they didn't even have. Because right. they're yes. essentially that confident that they weren't going to lose. And then the earnings came out. And then you see them just buying it. That's why it went up, what, $400 in a day? <laughs> that, that's so, called the short squeeze. So you're, I, you're, I'm, you're squeezing all the, the people that are short. You're squeezing them out of their position because they're forced to buy the stock right. on the open market at any price to cover their position to cap their losses. Can't they default on that and you don't get your no. shares? No. For you to be able to do that, you have to have enough money to cover a, a theoretical position. You have to have insurance, um, and it, you, you'll you'll never get a default. Like if you lend somebody money and they say, "Hey, I'm broke, I can't pay you back," you will get your shares. Right, because the broker just covering when you're playing on margin too, basically. Yeah. Is there, a, a, margin is there a delay on that though? Is there a delay on that? Like, let's say, let's say you, let's say on that day, on January, what was it, 22nd, right? You go yep. and you execute the trade and they don't have the money and they don't have the shares. Is there a delay on the, on the game? I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure at this point it's instantaneous. So you'd still just get the shares no matter what? Yes. What they have the ability to do is let's say you didn't have enough money to cover that, but you had shares in your portfolio. They'll go in and liquidate your own portfolio to cover that option. They'll start right. selling your own shares. They'll, basically, they'll, they'll liquidate everything you got, basically. <laughs> basically. Okay. Maybe we should go to Carnival because Carnival, if we assume, like you're saying, the two-year thing that you had. Look, Carnival, this is five days ago. So, what I'm saying is when I, when I bought it a week ago, it was 90-something percent less than it is today. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I made Look, ninety. I made ninety percent on it in a week. So how come you didn't sell it? Because I have two years to. Why would I? Well, Not no. The, 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 this is what I'm saying. So you're assuming it's going to go higher, obviously. Yes. Not only okay. that, I have the option to convert it to the stock. Being that I have the right to buy that stock at $12 eleven dollars a share. Yeah. Um, the, the we should have done that. Why didn't we do that? Why didn't this motherfucker tell us? <laughs> he told me after we did it. He's like, yo, look what I did today. <laughs> like, no, no, but, 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 but think about it. It's like a $1,500 bet. It's basically, you're, you're doing a 10x bet immediately. Like, right? Because that's what it is. It, I mean, it's not 10x. It's it's 100% almost. Um, well, okay. So uh, right now it's a, it's 100%, but maybe it's yeah. a 5x. But and you're paying very little to get that bet, I think, in the, the two-year timeline. If you, if you were to take one option contract, it costs like almost $900. So that $900 gives you the right to buy 100 shares over the next two years at whatever price it may go up to. Right, and you found one that's two years long. I mean, uh, I guess Tesla, yes. you can have a Tesla contract for two years too. We can probably see that as well. But, yeah. but the thing is that also, the, the longer you buy the option for, that raises the price. So like a $300 yes. call option on Tesla for a month is going to cost you way less than if you want it for three years. Well, if, if you go out to the three-year contracts on or two-year contracts on Tesla, the price is going to be astronomical. Um, because there, there are two things that determine the price of an option. It's the, the price, the strike price. If you say you want to buy Tesla hypothetically at a dollar in two years from now, you know, that, that's a pretty risky bet that somebody else would have to accept. 
on their right. end. So you're going to pay a hell of a premium for that option. Right, 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 right. It, it doesn't exist. I'm just giving an extreme example. But, you know, you have time and you have the strike price. Those are the two variables. Because if you have, if, you know, if I have two years, like I said before, if Carnival dropped down to, a, you know, $10, you know, $9 right now, it makes no difference because I still have two years to worry about it. They still have two years to recover. We're debating whether or not this really is the bottom or if there's yeah. going to be another bottom, the true bottom. Is this oh, well, there's definitely going to be at least a test of this bottom. That's my thesis. I, th I, th I think that once we start seeing the numbers coming out of New York and the next next three weeks, I think we might see the actual bottom. And it could be well, I, I, I guess before we check the CCL, you're saying maybe. What do you think? You, th you think we already saw the bottom? It's going to continue going up now? I, no, I don't think it, no, nothing continues to go up ever. Um, but I, I think that we'll see more predictable ups and downs because of the fact that, I mean, you're not going to see days where, you know, it's down 2000 points, then down another thousand up 2000. I think it'll, it'll fluctuate somewhat more realistically now because a lot of the bad news and everything is already baked into the prices. A lot of people were on, you know, had fire sales, just looking to protect whatever they had and sold anything at whatever price they could get because they thought the sky was falling. So now people are starting to come in and scoop up those shares and, and buy back some of those investments at ridiculously discounted prices in some situations. Um, uh, you know, like Carnival. Carnival was a, a, what, $50, $60 stock a week and a half ago. <laughs> so, you know. Well, I mean, it, it, those deals still exist. Thing. Even Delta is down yeah, 50, I, 60%. I, I bought shares of Delta as well. I bought shares of American also because all those things, they were so oversold. Like people are assuming that they're just going to go bankrupt um, when, you know, it's probably not, I mean, can it happen? Sure. But that's probably not the case. So people were just extremely fearful that this company's in big trouble. They started selling it and drove the price through the floor. I yeah. feel like we should have gone heavier when it went down you know, when, when Uber, when Uber was at 15 bucks, yeah. it's like, okay, that's, that's a gift. Yeah. Now it's you know, that's 30. literally a gift. But even look, but even at, even at 30, it, it was once at 70. So it's, it, I know. No, no, but I'm, what I'm saying is like at 15 bucks, it's like, you're saying that that company is worth nothing. You know what I'm saying? You're saying like, well, it's, it's going out of business. Bankers. It's going out of business. If you started buying shares of pretty much anything on Monday, this Monday that just passed, you you would be up a significant it doesn't matter what you bought at that point you'd be up yeah. a significant amount for, for carnival um, when i when i bought carnival it was a 22 point something percent dividend that's, that's crazy that was that, with, with, the, with the option was contract with the option contract that i bought i have the right to buy the shares at two dollars and fifty cents it pays a two dollar annual dividend, so I'm getting like an 85 90 percent dividend. Oh my god, it said that that was like a no brainer. We just totally, <laughs> we just that's, that's stupid. I, I mean, look, they could still go under, they could still crash. It's not, you know, it's not yeah. like this is all over and done. With. It's it's <laughs> unlikely, it's unlikely these giant corporations are going to be allowed to go under. It's that's like that's the bet. That's the bet. I don't think they will. Um, but and, and, and carnival, did, carnival may be more than Delta. Delta is definitely not being allowed to go no, anywhere. No way, no. But if I converted those shares, you know, minus whatever I paid for the premium, um, I, I, I would be locking in essentially a, you know, 85, 90% dividend rate because I'm paying $2.50 a share and it's paying me $2 per share annually. You have also get paid the dividends? Not with an option. You only get paid a dividend when you, when you lock it in. Exercise the option, yeah. Well, that's what so, we were so talking cool. this morning. Does it make more sense? Does it make more sense to keep just to, to, to convert it now and start taking part in the dividends for this year well, or that, you hold on that's to That's what I told that's what I told you earlier. I, I, I needed to look up the ex dividend date to see when it's gonna actually pay. And it just paid in February, so it's gonna be three months May. from now, right? Three months. Yeah. So if I were to convert anything, I would convert it right before it goes ex dividend and then I would capture those dividends instead of letting whoever holds my contract get those dividends here's, a, here's another question based on what you're oh, hold on so you have 200 you have uh two options each one's 101 each one's 100 two right yes two contracts i'm sorry so when you could only sell one whole contract right basically yes. okay yes. so every time you sell one contract that's a hundred shares gone yes i got it okay 
Uh, so why, why, why don't you actually, just in terms of investing, why don't you just take back your money right now, your 1800 and yeah. that, uh, that other thing is free. What other thing is free? You know, that one contract is paid for. Oh, I, I absolutely, I can do that, 100%. Yeah, because if you sell it, my you, original investment off the table. Well, that was, um, that, was my, that was my question this morning. What, what, do you set, what are you set to gain by holding on to this thing for another year and a half? You already just, just do it now. Like, like what, what's to stop you? What is the downside of converting it now? Well, he, he, he's betting, basically, I th let me, I'm going to answer that. <laughs> I'm going to answer. So 1800 bucks, he's, he's trying to say, okay, either I get my like 4X out of this, or I lose my 1800 bucks and that's it if it goes down and it just tanks. Right? Yeah, but my point is though, why, what, do you, what are you set to gain by holding on to the call option further versus cashing it in now and, and taking half, taking all the dividend money for the next year and a half? Okay, my, when I originally purchased the option, the option was a little bit less money than buying the shares themselves. Right, so I paid less for the option than I did for the shares. If I wanted to convert that and buy the actual shares and execute the option, now I have to pump another five hundred dollars into it because it's two dollars and fifty cents times a hundred times two contracts. So I would have to pump another five hundred dollars in there to execute that option. So right now my loss is capped at eighteen hundred dollars. If I execute theoretically and carnival goes bust you can add another five hundred dollar loss on top of that well I, i'm not following why it's an extra five hundred oh, no, no, no. wouldn't, wouldn't it be an extra nine fifty per share nine dollars and fifty cents because you have to execute per share no because i have the right to buy them at two dollars and fifty cents per share so for me to buy i have to physically pay for the shares i've already bought the right now uh, i have to physically pay for the shares okay I see. so you're, you're so, paying you're paying a little bit less than if you were to actually buy the shares outright. So you don't need to have as much money and capital up front to be able to control a large amount of shares. But if you want to execute, then you have to have the money to be able to cover that. Like with the Tesla example we gave, if you wanted to buy those 100 shares at $300, you have to have $30,000 in the account to be able to buy them. You're still right. getting them at $300, but you need that 30 grand to buy them. Yeah. You're saying two fifty dollars. Like so, if you execute that contract and you convert it to shares, yes, you need eleven fifty dollars, eleven dollars and fifty cents per share, not just two dollars and fifty cents. You need eleven dollars and fifty cents to be paid at, to get that share. At, at this, at no, at this point, I've already spent the eighteen hundred dollars for the right just for the option. If I execute, yes. Yeah, for the option, I've, I've already spent that $1,800 for the option. Now, if I execute, it would be another 500 on top of that because I need to actually buy the shares. So my total investment would be around $11.50 per share. Right. Uh, I, 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 well, well, that's where the problem comes in because now you do need more capital to get that. Yes. yes. So the re ba back to Carlos's original question, the whole reason I'm not converting it is because I don't have to right now. If I want to capture that dividend, which I probably will when it gets closer to the ex-dividend date, then I would have to put up the extra $500 to cover. For right now, I could just leave it as it is. It's going up, ex you know, it's going up at the same rate as the, the stock itself is. If not, it's actually going up a little bit more than the stock itself is. It's up a little bit more, and I paid a little bit less initially than buying the stock. So there's like a 15% uh, swing in there Spread, where I paid, yeah, yeah I, I paid a little bit less and it's up a little bit more than the actual shares. Um, but when it gets closer to that ex-dividend date, then I can convert it to the actual shares themselves and put up the extra money. I have three months to see what Carnival does risk right. free. But so here's, I, here's, you know, a, here's a if question. If Carnival though. says we're in big trouble, we need to close the company, why would I, you know what I mean? Why would I execute it? Because I'm not going to get that dividend for three months anyway. So no, I might I'm as well execute what I have. it now. I'm no. saying, if you, but so here's the question Have you calculated what, like, your options for two years? Have you calculated yeah. what's the, what's the, what is the, the dividend? What would that dividend pay out per if share? I, $2 per share. So, so it would be two dollars per share. So okay. So you would have to pay. You would have to pay five hundred dollars to convert it to make four hundred dollars in dividend. Five hundred in dividend. 
Well, you're also oh, assuming that no, no. Uh, you're also no, assuming no. Carnival that doesn't lower their dividend too. There's another problem there. And I'm just saying, at, at the rate it is yeah. right now, you'd have to pay 500 bucks yeah. to convert those to actual shares. Then on the day that the dividend pays, they're going to pay you $400 back. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. So you would you pay the 500 to convert the shares, then you make $400 essentially every quarter if this yes. dividend no, no, no. is the same. Wait, wait, is that $2 a quarter or is that $2 a year? It's two dollars a year. Oh, it's a year. It's that, yes. okay. They pay dividends yearly. Yes. Well, so yeah, yeah. So, 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 so basically, <laughs> Phil should have went big on this. He should have put like fifty thousand and nine bucks. Yep. And he's done. Yeah. <laughs> That's. I, I, if I if I did, I'd probably be be up about forty. If I put fifty thousand, yeah. I'd be up about forty something thousand right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Last last time I looked at it, I, it was uh, uh, um, like just around ninety percent. I was up. And that, that's not bad considering I bought it a couple of days ago. No, 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 that, that's fine. But you're, you're up ninety percent on your original investment. You, yeah. you're not. You haven't covered the extra five hundred that you'd have to put in in order to actually convert the stock. Yeah, that would just come from cash sitting in the account. Just something else. Okay. Got yeah. It. And I hey, hey, am I the only one getting lost? Uh, what happens to the, the the fact that you bought it at a strike price of of nine nine fifty? What happens to that? When do you pay that? I didn't buy it at a strike price of nine fifty. I bought it at a strike price of two fifty. What, oh, you know, what, he, what he's saying is the, the nine dollars. He's he's wondering what is the price of the share? What is the what is the price of the stock at the time you bought the option have to do with it? What he's saying is this: because he bought it at two fifty and the stock was nine dollars, you have to add that to it, and you that's that's the point when you start making money. You don't yes. start making money until the stock price clears what the stock price was when you purchased the call option plus the, plus price the premium of your option yeah does that make sense you're paying so, a premium for the op for the option to control a hundred shares right so when you're you know you have to factor in the price that you would still need to buy the shares plus you pay a little bit of a premium because no no that, that's what i'm saying so but you, you didn't pay yet the nine the what is it the I nine dollars i did that was my initial investment. That's where we got that eighteen hundred dollar investment. Oh, so oh, so you paid the nine plus the two fifty already. That's already paid. I have no. I paid the nine. I haven't paid the two fifty yet. I'll only pay the two fifty if I execute the option. If I let it expire or I sell the contract itself, I never have to pay that two fifty. Okay. So your strike price, you're saying is two dollars and fifty cents, correct? Yes. And you have. It's per share, so it's 200 shares. Yes. Okay, so it's 500 bucks. And you're saying when you get this option, like if I do this on TD Ameritrade, I don't have to pay that 500 bucks yet. You theoretically don't have to pay it ever. It, you you okay. only pay it if you want to convert it to shares in your account. You can just sell the contract and you never pay those $500. So, okay, so your nine bucks was what you paid for the shares to have this option. Yeah, nine bucks is what I paid for Times, the right. Right, so that's 1,800. Shares, shares at 250. Okay, got it, so that's 1,800. And then yeah. if you actually convert it, that's when it becomes $11.50 a share. Theoretically, Total. because you would add that 1,800 plus the 250, plus the 500 for the two contracts. Right, so but it's 11, it's basically 11.50 a share times 200. That's what yes. it sounds like. Yes. Okay, twenty three hundred. Okay, I got it. I got it. Now take and right, the price of car take the price of Carnival right now. Twenty twenty bucks approximately. Okay, wait, hold on. All right, now Carnival. multiply that hold by two hundred. Okay, eighteen dollars actually. Eighteen dollars. Yeah. Eighteen dollars times two hundred. Oh, my bad. Hold on. That's eighteen dollars right. times two. Yeah, <laughs> what you wish. <laughs> okay, thirty six hundred minus twenty three hundred. That's what it sounds like. Yes. So your profit is thirteen hundred bucks. Yes. Right. On, and and at this point, all I've spent is eighteen hundred. Right, 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 right. Uh, so I made thirteen hundred on eighteen hundred in a couple of days. It's no, not no, no. It's, it's not the greatest investment in the world. I wish I could have gotten it for way, way cheaper. Um, no, 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 no. It is a good investment. Obviously, I guess the issue is in we, hindsight. Sure. <laughs> we need to go harder next time. <laughs> yeah. It, it wasn't such a great investment because of the fact that the the price for the option contract was so expensive that it was almost worth it to buy. It probably was worth it to just buy the shares outright. 
the, the whole point of the options contract, it, it, was signi- it was slightly less because at the time, Carnival shares were hovering around $10 each if I would actually buy the shares where the contract was at $9. So, that make sense? Uh, no, no. Re- repeat that one more time. I'm sorry. When, when I bought the, the right to buy those shares, the, the share price of Carnival itself, actual shares, was $10 and change. Okay. Where the option was nine dollars. So it, it I wasn't, see. Yeah, it wasn't investment wise. It wasn't the biggest spread. If I had gotten it at you know seven or six dollars, that would. Have I, been I said that the point of this it looks like is that you get to put in a lot less money up front, Absolutely. and then you're taking a bet, basically. Oh, okay. If this turns right now, then I, I won't make as much, right? Yeah. You're basically. What did you lose? A dollar a share? A dollar fifty a share? That's what you're telling me. Yes. Which, but then you've capped your limit. You've capped your loss at eight at eight at eighteen hundred bucks. Yes. When when you're looking at options, normally what you want is the price of the strike and the actual uh, cost of the option, the bid and ask. Yeah. When you combine those together, they should be roughly around where the stock is now. So if Tesla's at five hundred dollars and you want to buy a three hundred dollar call option that call option, the bid and ask, should be somewhere in the $200 range. Because the $300 you need to pay, plus the two, you'll pay a little bit of a premium, uh, but you'll need to pay $300 per share, plus uh, $200 per contract will give you that 500 of where Tesla is right now. And you're gonna pay a little bit of a premium for that, but not much of what you're gonna pay over what the current value of the shares are right now. Okay, so if I'm going to, hold on, uh, is it 424, right, somewhere? I don't even know what this means, near the money. <laughs> what does that mean? Near, near the money, when you change that option, it's gonna, it's gonna show you, um, near the money is gonna show you contracts that are near the price of what Tesla is at now. It's not going to show you. Here, the right I'm, I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to I'm going to bring this up here. So yeah. near the money yeah. is where. What is that referring to? It's referring to the. It, it's only going to show you contracts that are around the price of where Tesla is right now. I see. And what is stacked? Stacked that, OHLC. That that's above my pay grade. Okay, I got it. Isn't we're going to go. Yeah, you know, we're going we're, we're going to go over this Tesla example because I'm not. I'm not. You know, I'm feeling it a little bit, but I'm not quite there yet. Take the ask price. If you were to just flat out pay the ask price, yeah, you'd be paying two thirty two. You'd be paying a twelve dollar per share premium. You're only putting up twenty three thousand dollars to control a hundred shares of Tesla. Where if you were to buy a hundred shares of Tesla, you'd be paying fifty two thousand dollars for the actual share. Right. So, so basically, I can get double the shares right now. That's what I'm getting at. So, I can get double the shares if I buy two of these contracts, right? Yes, you would have control of 200 shares. And assuming Tesla does really well by this date, then I've doubled my money. Like more than... Yeah. No, well that, you know what I want to do? No, no, more than doubled. It's like, uh, because you, because now, now you have 200 shares instead of the 100 you originally could afford to buy outright. You, you would, you, you're basically getting a buy one, get one free because of the fact right. that you're paying less than 50%. So if you, you would put up 20, you'd put up $46,000 for control of a hundred and something thousand dollars worth of Tesla shares. Okay. I think it all makes sense now. I'm ready. Let's bring up TD Ameritrade. <laughs> uh, I bet, I bet at your own risk.